Hello everyone. Welcome to my show Rocket Monday. Episode number 4 where we going to take a look into rocket propellants. So let's get start. So question comes to mind, what is it? In simplest term is basically the 90% of rocket. When you see a rocket like this, you have only that part, the F H part is the actual payload, everything else is just fuel basically. and uh, it is what's a reactionary mass basically this is what rocket engines throws at the back and get pushed up so uh, this is what also called as a propulsive mass now you have to understand this uh, if you throw solid or liquid directly like that it's not going to give you much thrust for getting thrust we use what's called exothermic chemical reaction what does that mean simplest sense you burn the fuel like either we can have hydrogen oxygen nitrous oxide uh, other fuels also and uh, that's how we get the actual rocket to go up so let's look into it more now what types of fuels are used now we have solid obviously we have liquid and then there is a hybrid which allows you to mix both of them now each of them has uh, its unique ability so let's look into them so we come to solid propellant so it has the first biggest advantage is cheap your fire tracker is made out of that because it's cheap then it is very easy to store now what does that mean that simply means you can have a rocket that's ready to go on moments notice or instantaneously without needing any refueling or uh, fuel prepping fuel topping procedures that are generally associated with liquid fueled rocket which makes it ludicrously attractive for military application earlier icbms used to have a uh, liquid fuel but then they were phased out because of uh, advancement in solid rocket boosters and uh, you really want to make sure your icbm is ready on a moment's notice not like you know okay we're going to fuel it up for half an hour and then we're going to launch it you might not have land left after that so uh, icbm needs instant response time for that reason solid boosters satisfies it very well now if it's cheap it's easy to work with it has enough power then why don't we use it all the time it does have some side effects first is it is very uh, low efficiency what does that mean in simplest term the mileage is very low don't it it's like a truck with very shitty mileage second now that you might be able to contract but what you can't contract is that uh, it has no control what does that mean simply let's say you're firing a rocket and uh, it goes up to a point where in atmosphere it starts to create drag on it generally at that time rockets throttle down a bit so they don't you know create a dangerous vibration you can't do that on solid boosters it it will create a maximum thrust or whatever it's designed to do and you can't throttle it or let's say atmospheric pressure changed and you're like okay we really need uh, to increase the boost to compensate you can't so there is no control into it so for military it's okay for uh, cheap and easy use it's quite good but it does have some side effects so let's look at its counterpart so we come to its counterpart which is liquid propellant so we have to understand this the sole reason we even bothered with liquid propellant is it's a very high efficiency specifically in vacuum and it's capable of restart so what does that mean let's say you put something in orbit let's say a spaceship but you also have to deorbit it so you know you can bring the humans back now for deorbiting burn you need to reignite the engine this is where the capability of restarting the engine comes in handy without it uh, you kind of stuck so that's why military uses it because they really don't want to you know slow down or things like that so but for human application you really want to make sure your engine is capable of restarting then it comes down to very fine point control it means a lot basically without this control uh, rocket will keep getting lighter and lighter and the engine will keep get producing more and more thrust now it's good and all that but problem is you might end up crushing the satellite that you are sending into orbit so you many time you was heard in spacex launches in live telecast they will say they are throttling back the engine like specifically around max q where atmosphere is fighting the most so they are like chill the engine they are still going at uh, very fast speed they are just chilling down the acceleration so they are like let's say is generally accelerating on 3 g's they are like toning it down to 2 g's so a uh, rocket can handle the vibration that is induced by atmosphere or let's say they are going in space and you know rocket is 80% empty now now engines are getting like really really excited and you know it's getting lot of thrust 
here's the problem the satellites are barely rated to 5g and you really don't want to push it because if that shatters inside the payload it's dead basically so they're gonna be like okay chill so control really matters specifically for human application and where you don't actually want to blow things up the side effect of this part is this puppy engines they are expensive very 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 expensive i mean like they can cost upwards of 50 to 80 percent of the rocket itself and they are very sensitive what does that mean basically when you see a rocket like this falcon 9 uh, this is only fueled up when it's at the launch pad. It's not like your car where you know you know you keep it fueled up. No, this is fueled up at the launch pad. And here's the deal: it's fueled up at the last minute. It's not like okay today we're gonna have a launch. No, it's like oh we're gonna launch in next 30 second. They're gonna top up the fuel. So you uh, before the launch of any rocket, you would see there is a lo long procedure of fueling up. That's because of these things and uh, many liquid propellants are cryogenic. Basically, they can't be kept in a tank for a long time. You, you fill it up, you fire it. You don't have the time because it will start to evaporate. So those are the few pros and cons of the liquid propellant. So now we have the so uh, solid propellant. Now we have liquid propellant. Now there is another third kid in town. Hybrid propellants. Now you must have heard this term hybrid rockets. So what does that mean? Well, it has best of both worlds. It's cheap, it's controllable. Now, however, because it's the best of both worlds, it's actually not great at either. It's just okay. It's a spaceship one and a spaceship to both use them. And aside from uh, them, there, there is not much application of this sort of thing because while they use a solid fuel, they generally have a liquid oxygen. It could be nitrous oxide, it could be uh, hydrogen peroxide sometimes it could be liquid oxygen now you are controlling that the valve you are controlling the oxygen fluid so you are controlling how fast your uh, solid booster is burning however you don't get uh, benefit of uh, mileage benefit of fully liquid system or you don't also don't get the like you know always on ability of a solid booster so it's kind of meh and that's why you don't see them in used in very large system they are generally limited to you know uh, small applications like this so the that was my presentation for rocket propellants and i hope you like the presentation if you liked it please like if you didn't like it dislike and leave a comment if you you enjoyed it, please subscribe and press the bell icon if you're free thanks for watching